Rhett Lashley and the SMU Mustangs won the American Athletic Conference Championship over Tulane last year, an 11-win season that really put that upward trajectory into the program. So much momentum that they ended up making the jump from group of five to what used to be power five, now power four, the ACC. So they go from the AAC to the ACC, and we are here on the CFBpod.com show to bring you our 2024 SMU Mustang bold predictions for this football season. Hello, everyone. I'm Blaine Gilmer, joined by my friends Dave Shoemate, Mike Waxman, and Brennan Moore as we are going to be talking about the Mustangs. And just got to lead right into it, Mike. Uh, as we get get in here, we just we've talked about all these teams, and it seems that as we go through our our bold predictions and our previews, all we're talking about is change, change, and here we are, another another change of conference and realignment strikes again with SMU going to the ACC. Yeah, SMU is in there along with uh, Cal and Stanford, and truth be told, SMU would be a better fit in the Big Twelve, I think, from both the talent standpoint and regionality, but. Um, it, it's definitely a new day in, uh, in Dallas, but Rhett Lashley has a really talented team, and I think it'll be interesting to see how they do in a year where the schedule is not super difficult for their first year in. Dave, Rhett Lashley, a name that people are familiar with in the SEC in the SEC realm, they're familiar with him in the ACC realm. So he's not he's not been a guy that that is a stranger to people, but he has just seemed to strike a chord there in Dallas and really is doing a great job with that program right now. No, he absolutely is. Uh, I, I think the transition will be fine for in the ACC from from that standpoint. Overall, I mean, we talk a little bit about recruiting. I mean, from a transfer portal destination, even when Sonny Dykes was there, is now at TCU. I mean, there's so much talent in that Dallas metro area that even if you don't get them on the initial signing, there's a good chance they bounce back. And I was even looking at the roster today. You're always going to have a bunch of coaches who at some point, probably SMU, could come back in. And I see a bunch of receivers are on this roster that Rhett Lashley had familiarity with Miami. It's easy to sell, hey, come. you're you're not coming to just a college town, guys. Guys, you're coming to a pretty cool city. could be expensive conversation for another time, but cool enough to attract is a big transfer portal uh, hub here. So I think that kind of gives them a leg up as they're entering this ACC, certainly over Stanford. Obviously, you're talking about academic restrictions and Cal as well. And, you know, Brennan, I mean, it's not just the – it's not just what Dave mentioned in terms of – the location in the city and, and, and they kind of brand towards Dallas, making themselves the team for Dallas, you know, but also Brennan, they have kind of parlayed all of that into a nice culmination uh, of talent. I mean, they, they have a good collection of talent and is actually, are actually on par as we were talking about off air before we got going that they're on par with a lot of power four teams. Yeah, I know the narrative going around of like G5 teams moving up to a power conference. It's like, oh, they might struggle for a couple of years. And we saw some teams struggle going from G5 to the Big 12 last year, like Cincinnati, BYU missed a bowl game. Uh, same thing with Houston. So, but I don't think that's the case really with this SMU team. I mean, you look at the talent, uh, they're right up there with, with some of the better ACC teams, not quite like Clemson and Florida State, but maybe like the NC States of the world. Uh, you know, maybe like your North Carolinas of the world. I think they're right up there with talent, especially via the transfer portal. I mean, they're getting a ton of guys from the transfer portal. They've had a couple of really, really good classes, and I think that has translated to success on the field. And personally, I'm not expecting a big adjustment for SMU. I think they'll just hop right in the ACC, and I think they'll have success this season. You know, Mike, before we get into our bold predictions, I wanted to touch on – you know, it's not like SMU is just when they go to the the portal, they don't seem to be, you know, pulling up guys from, you know, ABC College and, and D2, D3. They're going and getting guys from Ohio State, from Georgia, mm-hmm. from Oklahoma, guys that it may not have panned out or it may not have been exactly what they wanted, but there was a reason they were there to begin with. And one of those guys in Amari Abor from Ohio State, you can give a little uh, insight on there, long time. Ohio State beat writer here, um, Mike is. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about what they're getting, maybe their their most prized possession there in the transfer portal. Well, he was a pass rusher, which is one position that Ohio State is not lacking. Um, so he was going to be stuck behind JT Tumalo, Jack Sawyer, 
all the various guys there. He is a Texas kid, so it certainly made sense to go back to SMU. And I think the fact that most people uh, view SMU and Rhett Lashley as offense and we've got a wide open passing game, we've had some really good running backs. I don't think the defense gets a lot of credit. And I think kids like Abor and a few others who have joined the program in recent years want that to change. I think they want SMU to become known as a little bit more of a physical team rather than a finesse. And I think when you hear Rhett Lashley, I think people automatically think finesse. And I think that's going to that's gonna change with them getting into the ACC and some of the matchups they're going to have. Yeah, well, I mean, when you add also names like Justin Jefferson, and excuse me, not Justin, what's his, I messed up, I'll, I'll cut this out, Jonathan. And, it, and when you add guys like Jonathan Jefferson from Georgia, I mean, a big, talented defensive lineman, but as you mentioned with Abor and, and the guys coming back, this is another impact of NIL, right? You've got you've got two guys coming back at Georgia, Nazir Stackhouse, and you've got Warren Brinson that were there in front of Jefferson, and you know, he said, hey, I'm going to go look for opportunities elsewhere. Ends up at SMU. You got Tank Booker uh, that has come over from Arkansas. So guys that have played in the SEC, guys that have played uh, in, in the Big Ten that are now coming over and being a part of this SMU program. So I think that's a big part of it. Deuce Harmon, uh, Mike, I mean, you know, Dave, that's a, that's a name that we've heard at Texas A&M for a long time. So these are guys that in terms of, okay, there's talent there. And now, do you do you feel like that's just the way that Rhett Lashley and company are going to go about it now? Maybe they'll just be more of a transfer portal heavy team than they are a high school recruiting team, Dave. Uh, yeah, I, it'll be interesting from that standpoint. They're gonna they're gonna have a lot of opportunity to really get a lot of guys from a lot of these different schools. Because again, I think Texas A and M's up their recruiting game. So again, if they take some kids, like you mentioned, Deuce Harmon, if it doesn't work out, they can go to SMU, Texas as well. If it doesn't work out, uh, I really do think getting them to the ACC will help that because it's so much more. When I was at UCF before they announced they were going to the Big Twelve, it was such it was almost overkill how much these kids wanted to play Power Five at the time. Now Power Four, so I do think them getting into that conference in the ACC, we'll see what the future holds. But I do think that kind of gives them a leg up now that they're not "quote unquote" G five in the American. Yep, uh, no, for sure. I I used to do a show with uh, and and work a little bit with Jim Don and former head coach at Georgia, and he used to say, "Hey, when you walk in with that that G or that SEC logo on your on your chest, you're already ahead of the game." Well, now they get the benefit of of okay being in the ACC, being in a a Power Four conference, so that should help out when they walk into some of those homes as well all right brendan we're going to start with you what is your bold prediction for 2024 for the smu mustangs yeah my bold prediction i'm looking at preston stone the quarterback at smu had a solid season last season 60 percent completion percentage over 3,000 passing yards 28 touchdowns six interceptions those passing yards that placed them 26 in the country in passing yards i think he gets into the top 15 this season i think he'll take a big step in the off season uh and plus, he's got a lot of his returning pass catchers back. Jake Bailey's back. RJ Maryland, the tight end, is back. Uh, I believe Kelvante Dixon's also back. Uh, Keyshawn Smith is back. Jordan Hudson's back. Uh, they, and then they got two transfers as well, Ashton Cozart from Oregon and Brashard Smith. So there's a ton, a ton of weapons uh, for Stone that he's acquainted with, that he's worked with before, he's has, he has chemistry with. And there's a couple of new guys that might mix in there as well. So... I'm excited to see what Preston Smith can do, and I think um, he'll he and this SMU offense will take a big step. And also looking at the schedule, I mean, what daunting defense are they really going to play? I mean, maybe Florida State, maybe Louisville, but that's really the only two good defenses that I think they're going to play all season. Yeah, they avoid – and listen, this is huge. They avoid Clemson. They avoid Miami. They avoid North Carolina. They avoid NC State all in the first year. I mean, if you – I guess the ACC said, "Hey, since you're not taking any money this year, since you're since you decided that you're going to just basically come and and, uh, and just be a part of it, have a kind of participate, we're going to take it easy on you on the schedule because they it could not it could not bear out any better for them in terms of that." Mike, what is your bold prediction for SMU? Yeah, it definitely did uh, set up well. Any any newcomer 
uh, th this is the way that you hope whenever you leave for realignment, hope that your league office gives you the schedule that SMU got this year. Um, that said, I do think a lot of what we've all talked about is true, that there is talent on hand, but I will say that the three games SMU lost last season were all against Power 5 teams. And even though they have talent, what usually separates a Power 5 team from a G5 team? Depth. And I think playing Power 5 team every week now, instead of getting the break and being the best team in the AAC or competing with Tulane for being the best team, now every team is not only going to have the same level of talent as you, some of them, like Florida State and Louisville, are going to have more. And that's what I think the ultimate uh, story is. I do think SMU's first year will be good, but my bold prediction is the middle of the schedule kind of undoes their season. They play Florida State and Louisville back-to-back, -back, Louisville on the road. They have an off week. They play at Stanford, which they will win. And then don't discount Duke um, in with, uh, with Manny Diaz. He's always got defense going, and I think that that could be a game – even coming off of a win over Stanford, that could maybe be a, a, a trip up game. So they could lose in the middle of the season. And then I think they write the ship because the schedule gets easier again. So I think that the middle of the schedule keeps SMU from being a true contender in the ACC. Dave, what you got? Mike literally echoed mine. It's, it's, it's literally mine. I think that I think the conference did them – um, a favor with their schedule from uh, like we said they they don't get Clemson they miss NC State they miss North Carolina but I do think this is I mean TCU is not a conference game but we're playing we're we're playing for the uh, old championship trophy right there for the city essentially the city of Dallas what do we call it, the Iron Skillet y'all said yep <laughs> playing for the skillet I mean those back to back games Mike mentioned it that was exactly what I was going to say September twenty first TCU September twenty eighth Florida State October fifth at Louisville you lose all three of those. Again, I don't necessarily think they will, but if I'm going a bold prediction, I'm unfortunately going a little glass half empty here. They lose all three of those. In today's college football, how much you kind of get the roster back? That'll be a Rhett Lashley challenge right there. Like, hey, guys, like it's going to be tough to go play for the ACC title. Actually, we're starting off 0-2 here, coming on three straight losses. And I think Mike's there exactly right. I don't know if it'll be Newcomer or Stanford they slip up to, but it could be a Manny Diaz first-year head coach. Johnny Brewer, who left SMU, was uh, – Brett Lashley's right-hand guy is now the OC at Duke. So they'll be very familiar with them. That could be something they trip off. And like, like I said, down the road, Pitt, Boston College, Virginia, Cal um, would be something they can kind of get back on the tracks. But again, I think overall the roster, like, I mean, like y'all mentioned, I think Brennan was saying it. Like, I mean, outside of Florida State, Louisville, and probably Clemson, it's just the depth, the top 40 instead of the top 22. I mean, they have just as good as rosters as probably Boston College, Syracuse, Pitt, Virginia, Wake Forest. Virginia Tech probably recruited a little bit better, at least from a depth standpoint. Virginia Tech or Georgia Tech's getting up there. But I do think it could be an easier transition than landing the plane, especially those last four games. But I do think they get out of the ACC title race and the trip to Charlotte probably a lot sooner than maybe some people think. Yeah, now, listen, my bold prediction for SMU in 2024 is a little bit more optimistic, and it's just because I look at going into that Florida State game. I think they'll be undefeated going into that Florida State game. I think they'll take care of their non-conference. I really do. I feel like it's going to be, be good for them. And looking at that Florida State team coming into it, okay, we know that Florida State is has reloaded, but, you know, they're still – can they recover – emotionally all that kind of stuff and when you go down to it, they play georgia tech boston Conf boston college memphis and cal and cal before they face smu so a gauntlet for them as well and they have to come out to dallas for that game so game. i don't know if they i don't know if they get that that, that game or not but i'm telling you i think smu is going to give them quite the fight going into that one and i what i'm what i'm predicting is of the fsu and Louisville game, I think SMU gets one of those. They get one of them on their way to an eight-plus win regular season. I think it's a really nice uh, regular season for SMU first year in the ACC. And I think that Red Lashley, listen, we you know say it all the time. Said it with Mississippi State and Jeff Lebby. Okay, you can either be better than, less than, or different than. Well, Red Lashley knows how to be different. 
different then, Dave. And I think you know what I'm talking about with the, the th ties with Gus Malzahn, all that yeah. kind of stuff. He knows how to be different then. And I think he will not only – I don't think the talent gap is that tremendous with a lot of these teams, and I think he'll be able to be different than his scheme, his approach, and how he goes about doing stuff. So that is my bold prediction for SMU in 2024. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in here to CFBPod.com show. We're going to be working diligently behind the scenes. We're working on a special project for you as we speak. Right now, it, we have something in the works that I think by this summer, you're going to be really, really excited about, and we're going to be announcing it sooner rather than later. So that's going to be coming out there via the website and different stuff like that. Also, subscribe here on the channel for all of our previews, predictions, reactions, all of our banter, everything that, that is going on. We greatly would appreciate that as well. Subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button for the like helps us out greatly. So, guys, we appreciate you. God bless you. And we'll catch you next time to talk more SMU, more ACC, and more college football right here on the CFBPod.com show.